the world's most advanced cold wallet for the new generation of cryptocurrency lovers. So if you are interested in buying this decent wallet, you can find a link in the description down below where you will get a 20% discount. Thank you very much and let's dig in the video. What's up XRP family? Thank you guys for joining the video for today. Let's dig in. Here we have John E. Deaton talking. The SEC points out that there wasn't a real use case for XRP by Ripple until 2018 with ODL. Ripple chose quite arguably the most difficult industry to disrupt. The half century old cartel banking system, a system built on fees generated from friction. Jamie Dimon ain't happy. So this is a guy who is always, so we're going to get more information on this guy in just a second. But I just want to get into what he's saying here. Fast crypto payment seems to have struck a nerve with Jamie Dimon. It's clear that the mega banks are not supportive of the faster payments side of the crypto innovation. The thing is that they can't stop it, guys. They definitely cannot stop it. They are not the only ones in charge of these things. He can give his opinion. And by the way, um, his, his company is buying Bitcoin as well. So, you know, they say these things. But on the low, they actually know what is happening. So, but we'll we'll see a video on that in just a second. Let's take a look first what he's saying here. But it, the real time payment system, uh, the ability to get a twenty four by seven wire system at the Fed would be critical to it. And their new real time system ought to provide that. But one of the disadvantages in payment system technology is the ability to pay on the weekends and move a substantial amount of money that actually clears. T plus zero security settlement would be doable if you actually could have the money move during the night. And so I think you know, we're all aware that we've connected our real time payment system or connecting it to other parts of the world that we've put together through the clearinghouse that on enable money to move real time. You connect that with Zelle and things you can move it with no cost to another banking client. As long as someone doesn't step in and say, oh, that is not sufficient to have Santander in Spain, you do the KYC so we can rely on it. We, we need some enabling things. And I think, you know, if we do that right, we can take, you know, you will see the innovation. This is already set up and already moving. And by the way, we move trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars a day very efficiently. Um, you know, so I think people's view of what's inefficient is kind of interesting, but you, you have to look at what really moves. Well, we're aware that money was transferred in uh, cryptocurrency as donations to Ukraine. They were spending it the next day. And if it had been transferred in U.S. dollars, it would have taken about 10 days uh, for it to reach. Uh, I, I see some of you shaking your heads. Disagree, Mr. Diamond? Right now, we're moving $10 trillion around the world. Zipping and zapping through AML systems, OFAC systems, regulations, AI systems, cyber systems, safely, immediately, a lot of it's real time. You're talking about retail payments. Yes, I am. Yes, and I agree with that. That's a thing that we all can work on and fix. But that's a very small thing relative to the other. Thank you for being here. I yield back. See, guys, the, of course, they're not going to tell the truth. They're not going to say that they will use cryptocurrency technology or anything like that. Because he's saying retail payments is a small thing, but actually retail payments is a very, very big thing, a very big industry. And we will get more information about that in just a second. So here we can see. Listen for yourself and don't be shaken. Let's take a look. Extremely egregious. So on September 12th, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He's see, so he says this is the same guy that you saw in the, in the video, guys. Jamie Dimon. So he says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire any one of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Dimon speaks, people listen. People listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. It says he buy anyone that buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying. His it. company is buying it. So it's just, I mean, so unethical. Right. Okay. Extremely. So you heard that with your own ears, guys. So this guy who is saying that crypto is like they're, they're actually not uh, supporting crypto is actually buying Bitcoin after saying that it is a fraud so how how much can you trust these people well you can't of course that's obvious 
but you should not listen to what they're saying you should see that what they're doing right because they're actually just buying cryptocurrency so that means they will also use ripple technology at one point because it's inevitable mr garlinghouse at Missouri crypto the summary judgment may be in two to nine months so the case will end in two to nine months when sec filed case 99.9 .9 of xrp activity had nothing to do with ripple stop taking shots at other assets fast majority of xrp ripple sells to their customers is repurchased facts matter so this is a bit of a summary of what he's saying here in this masari um crypto event great clip ripple gc all all the roti lays out how gary Gans is actively hurting the investors he claims to protect through his ongoing regulation by enforcement but ultimately you're hurting the retail holder of this asset one in five americans have either hold own or have interacted with crypto and that uncertainty ultimately hurts them so when you hear the chair of the sec say i'm doing this all in the name of consumer protection actually it's the very opposite it's the consumer that's getting hurt the day the sec sued ripple um, the digital asset that we rely upon to effectuate the cross-border transactions xrp was delisted or suspended from trading from nearly every u.s platform in the u.s and 15 billion dollars in market cap volume was erased did ripple get hurt our business moved offshore who got hurt the men and women who owned xrp in the u.s who've been locked out of their accounts and can't access xrp in the u.s if i could just give one more example in Gary Gensler's editorial, he talked about a settlement with BlockFi, a lending platform, and what a great success that was. What happened? They settled with BlockFi, and they said, if you want to be a lending platform, you have to come in and register with the SEC. For those who were paying attention, we kind of all knew there was no path to registration with the SEC uh, because the regulatory framework wasn't there. And the, he, uh, the SEC assessed a $100 million fine. Shortly thereafter, BlockFi was not able to make the first $10 million down payment on the $100 million fine. They went on the auction block. They were sold. Two other companies with similar business models quickly went bankrupt. And the consumers who had funds on those platforms were left holding the bag in bankruptcy court. That does, at the end, so that was the, the response in the Wall Street Journal to what Gary Gensler basically calling him out, saying, stop invoking consumer protection stop invoking integrity of the markets you're hurting the consumer regulatory uncertain uncertainty creates havoc in the marketplace so again guys here we can see that these people that i showed you in the beginning the regulators and these people in congress they do not care about hurting investors or not and that is actually what he's saying here because these people are actually the regulators they they decide what's going to happen and of course the sec as well but that's just how it is today sbi ceo every bank in japan will use ripples xrp by 2025 now that's not a coincidence so this guy is saying that retail payments are a very small thing and then he says that every bank in japan is gonna use xrp now can you see the difference japan is very open by the way about the use of ripple ripples xrp token currently bears further uplifting news at sbi which is a ripple enthusiast has planned to have a few banks in japan and utilize the token by the 2025 osaka S expo the strategic business innovator group is one of the biggest financial services firm in the world the groups companies and businesses are typically held at sbi holdings based in tokyo japan the ceo of the company Yoshitaka Kitao has recently said earlier in February that SBI VC trade will go live next month in March. This would mean that verified members will be able to purchase the XRP token as well as other tokens with the Japanese yen. Just all these things that are happening, guys, at the same time, and it's not coincidence. Ripple has invested in over 60 companies across the crypto landscape and close up to $500 million. It's moving fast. It's moving very, very fast. 
Can XRP break out of prison? Well, we actually already broke out because that's not really the line or resistance anymore. The resistance was more the line that you can see on the head and shoulders pattern. That really broke with confidence. So now we can see much more upside in the short term. We're in the market phase where Bitcoin Maxi spew baseless propaganda attacks at Ripple, at XRP. Why? Because they're afraid of its success and ability to dethrone King Bitcoin. Signs like this tell me a major pump is in the midst. Now just think about it, guys. A lot of people do not like this, what XRP is doing. They see that XRP is much more efficient than Bitcoin, much better, and is so much cheaper. Now, when Bitcoin was cheap, there were some people buying it. When it was $100, when it was $13, $10, there were people buying it because they saw the bigger picture, right? It's the same with XRP, guys. There is going to be a moment that XRP is going to be more worth than $100. It's, it's just going to happen. It's just that if you are so close-minded like these people, you will not see it. XRP is dangerously centralized, so it can never be used in any situation requiring fail-safe security, unlike Bitcoin, based on non-zero facts, right? Nothing. XRP has surged past 43 cents, pumping over 51% since June, making one of the top three performing cryptocurrencies in the world. While Bitcoin, ETH, and other tokens plunge to new lows, money is flowing into XRP as SEC settlement looms exactly as we predicted months ago getting very interesting guys what a sight seeing xrp rising a win or settlement is in touching distance we've told you for months and months now be prepared as the train has already left this is the only this is only the beginning now the thing is i think cryptos are gonna go lower guys bitcoin ethereum i think they're gonna go lower we don't know what's gonna happen with xrp but it would be beautiful if xrp can just break the highs and actually decouple itself from all these cryptocurrencies and actually go and do what it's made for i should have got more xrp rather than these effing meme tokens now this is something that a lot of people are mistaking about they're focusing on small gains but if you're an investor guys if you invest in real technology something with utility you will always win in the end. And that is why I picked up this tweet, guys, because a lot of people just look at the small gains, the, the short-term gains, the fast gains, but those are not the real gains. The real gains come with patience. And that's why this guy is also saying the XRP army is the toughest SOBs in the industry. To go through this entire process, you've got to have patience and diamond hands. And that's what's going to reward you the most in the end. 100%. Russia approved the use of Bitcoin and crypto cross-border payments. Interesting. Just now, Russian officials approve use of crypto for cross-border payments. This is getting extremely interesting, guys. Thank you for watching the video. See you in the next one. Cheers.